So my husband last week told me to block out my calendar and that he had something planned for Wednesday and that was it. And so here I am thinking, okay, what are we doing on a random Wednesday? Like this is not typical for us. So we get to Wednesday and the whole plan is we're going to drop our younger son off at my parents' house. Our older son is coming with us. And that's all I knew. And so I'm thinking in my head, we're going to go for a nice hike. It was a bright, sunny day. It was beautiful out. I'm like, it'll be a nice, relaxing day. I'm looking forward to this. And then it comes out that we're having a plane ride to Atlantic City. And I'm like, what? This is crazy. Like, I, I just like the whole expectation of what I had versus what was happening. I'm like, all right. So now I had to process this because I thought we we're going to have this nice relaxing day. And here kind of, it got thrown on me that we're taking a small plane to Atlantic city, completely random. And I, uh, for me, I don't even think my husband knows, but I really do not like small planes. Like that's something that I just fear. I don't like it. I'm uncomfortable. I, um, when I was younger, we took a small plane over the Grand Canyon. I just did not have a pleasant experience. It was awful. And I never really cared to ever go back on a small plane after that. And so for me, I went from looking forward to the day to now feeling like I'm fearful of the day. And I don't even know if I want to participate. So I was having this inner battle of like, do I go on the plane and like take advantage of this opportunity because it's unique and it's really, it would be pretty cool to do that. Or do I not do that and move in fear? Like, because I had a lot of fear around, I was very uncomfortable with the whole idea. Do I just stay and not do that because I do feel fearful. So I was having this battle of like, take the opportunity or, or don't, because this is scary. And then I was also having this battle of like, my son has never been on a plane. This would be his first flight. I don't want to miss that. And I also want to be there for him, but I'm also very fearful and don't even know if I want him going on on it. So there was a huge inner battle going on of like, do we, don't we, do we, don't we? Well, long story short, we ended up going on the plane and got to the airport and the plane and our friend who was the pilot was flying and very particular and, you know, went through all the checks and everything. I I was just feeling more relaxed the more we were in it and we ended up taking off and get up in the air and we're flying over our house and, you know, all the land that we, we see every day from the ground. And it was just, it was just very beautiful moment. And I got up there and I'm like, you know, I am so grateful that I took this opportunity that I did not let fear dictate what I was going to do. And that I went out of my comfort zone to do something that it was pretty amazing. I mean, it was really, was an amazing opportunity. So I was just so grateful and just really started cherishing that moment and feeling just so thankful that I had this opportunity to do this with my, my husband and my son and and our friend. And so when we're up in the air, you get thinking, you're thinking a lot. And I just realized how much of this flight really related to things I've learned about life and the changes that I've seen in myself, the changes that I've seen in my clients and how much we can compare the things that were going on in this plane to what goes on in our life. And so I really wanted to share four lessons that I learned from this, this amazing opportunity and this experience to share with you, to give you maybe a different perspective of how you view things. So one thing that really came to mind when I was up there and just realized how much it is so true for life is that when we were flying, our friend who's the pilot, he was showing us how, where our plane is on the, on the uh, map versus like our trajectory. So there were like two little, you know, planes that kind of showed. And so when he was flying it manually, any little shift of the stick would change the whole trajectory. So even if you went off of that a little bit, it would kind of have you going a whole different direction if you just continue down that path for a long time. So if we were trying to get back up to where our house is and we just shifted the flight the tiniest bit to the right, we may have ended up miles away from our house. And so it really is so true for life and that 
the small changes we make on a daily basis and we do it consistently over and over and over again can really lead us down a completely different path. And that is the most beautiful thing in life because I know so many times I felt like I had to make these huge changes, like anything that I wanted to do, you know, I was going through the eating disorder when I was going through the chronic back pain, I felt like I had to make these huge life changes for me to finally feel free from them all. But what I've come to realize that was never this big overarching change that I made that made a difference in my life. Those actually kind of backfired for me. The things that made a difference were those small daily things that I incorporated that I made a commitment that I'm going to show up for myself today. And no matter how small it is, I'm going to continue doing that. And those were the things that made all the difference in changing my life and catapult me, catapulting me in a different direction. So I wanted to share that with you today because there's so many times that people I work with get overwhelmed feeling like I don't want the life I have, but I feel like I don't have the energy or resources to change it in the way that it needs to be changed. So just taking this to heart and understanding that it doesn't take these big efforts to make a whole different life. It's the smallest little things that can absolutely change your trajectory. And that was just, I feel like such a powerful lesson that really kind of resonated with me when we're flying the plane that even just the smallest shift in direction changed the whole trajectory of that plane. The second one was that our friend, very smart guy, he was just explaining things as we were going very educational while we were flying. And so he was explaining how the higher you go in elevation as you're flying, the thinner the air is, which, which makes sense. And obviously the lower you go in elevation, the thicker the air is. So as you fly higher and you're in higher elevation, your ground speed increases. So you actually are traveling faster across the ground, even if your plane isn't necessarily going at a different speed because of that resistance with the air. And that, that is so real for life as well. When we move our energy into these higher states of feeling grateful, feeling joy, feeling love, we don't have to necessarily put more effort into our life for us to move faster and go into a direction that we want to go into because we're in these higher states that we don't meet that same resistance that we do in these lower states. When we feel guilt, when we feel shame, when we feel like we're a disappointment to ourselves or we'll never be worth enough, or we'll, we can never meet up to the expectations of others. Or we're trying to always feel like we're, 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 we're not even living up to the expectations of ourselves. And it really is so true for life. If we can move our vibrations, move our energy into this higher level and feel like we truly are worth everything, we truly can feel joy, even if our external experiences aren't changing, that we can love the people that we're meant to love and that we can, by all means, love ourselves, then we, we don't necessarily have to take all this energy to move our vehicle forward, we can just use that higher elevation, that higher vibration, higher energy to move faster towards what we want to. And so it's so true as we go through life is that if we stay in these lower levels that are really just self-defeating, we're all we're going to meet is resistance towards what we're trying to get to. And we're, it's just going to take more energy to get to that goal. It's going to take more effort to get to that goal. But if we can bring up our vibration, bring up our energy and bring up our inner core of how we feel about ourselves and just start loving ourselves and having compassion for who we are, then we don't need to deplete our resources to get to where we need to go or where we want to go. We can just move in less resistance. And I just found that to be just so powerful as I was thinking up there. I did a lot of thinking up in that air, um, but it just really resonated with me and everything that I've learned and that, that I've helped others with that it just makes such a difference when you move in less resistance versus more resistance. The third one is that navigation. So the whole time, obviously there's navigation going on. Um, there were the, the GPS systems and there's so many data points and things that you have to keep track of as a pilot. And just, it was so amazing just to watch him navigate through different airspaces and very, very cool experience to see that. And what really resonated with me is that you have to have a vision in life. 
And you have to have something that moves you in a direction that you desire. And if you don't have a vision for what you want life to be, not what you think life has to be or the limiting beliefs that you think keep you in the place where you are, but where you truly can dream about what your dream life is and have that vision and start moving towards it, that is the most crucial part of any kind of journey. So what does that vision look like? And maybe it's to be pain-free. Maybe it's to feel like you're not bogged down in work. Maybe it's to feel like you have autonomy, you're respected, you're loved by people. You Maybe you want to feel supported by friends and family. Maybe you want to have that dream car, that house on the beach, whatever it is in your life allow yourself to dream untethered, not, not bogged down by, well, I don't know if I could do this. What are the logistics of it? What's the reality of it? Those are all just limiting beliefs that keep you stuck. If you can just allow your brain to just move in that direction and feel what that would feel like. Now you have that navigation. Now you can start making decisions on a daily basis to allow yourself to move into that direction. And so the key part in any journey. And the journey that we took that day was that there was navigation in place. We knew how to get to where we were going and it allowed us to make those proper adjustments. We may have gotten off path for a little bit. We got back on, you know, and we were able to make those adjustments to get to our final destination. It's the same thing for life. You have to have that final destination. You have to have that navigation. You have to expect that you may not stay on that path perfectly the whole time. But as long as you make those little adjustments to get back onto it, you will get to where you need to go and where you want to go. So that's number three, navigation, huge. <clears throat> the fourth one is autopilot versus manual. So a lot of time, I, our, our friend who was the pilot had the plane on autopilot. So it was making those adjustments, doing all the things it needed to do. And he was obviously just assessing that everything was going according to the plan, but he didn't really have to be involved in it. It was just kind of going. The plane was doing what it's supposed to do by the way it was programmed. And when he took it off manual, that's when he could direct it to where he wanted to go. So when we went over our house, he took it off of autopilot. We circled around our house. We got to see our house, take pictures of it. It was really cool. Like we got to actually be in control of creating our experience. And, but if we were just an autopilot, it would just take us the most direct, most efficient, and maybe not the most exciting path, but it'll get you to where you're going. That's about it. And it's the same thing for life. I mean, think about your day. How much of your day is spent on autopilot? We're just going through the motions. We got to wake up in the morning. We got to take a shower, brush our teeth, eat breakfast. We go off to work, commute there, do everything at work. We commute back to home. We make dinner. We, you know, maybe watch TV, go to bed, do it again. <laughs> same routine. I mean, you don't really have to think about it. Think about how many times you drove to work and you didn't even like consciously, you weren't even aware of what you're doing. You just like kind of got in your car and you're like, oh my gosh, I got to work. I didn't even really, I'm not even aware of how that happens. You know, it's like we're on autopilot. We do things so much and everything is so routine that we don't have to think about it. And life just kind of takes us the way it's going to take us. But what if for a moment you took your life off of autopilot? And what if for a moment you did something and you did it manually and you made it exciting and you took the path that you wanted to take? Like we wanted to go see our house. So we, we got to experience that. I mean, that was such a cool thing to see our house from the sky, but it's the same thing in your life. Like what if there's something that you want to experience? How can you take yourself off of that autopilot, put it in your head and start moving yourself in that direction where you can experience the life that you want and be consciously aware how can you take that moment to pause and, and really just reflect on, am I just going through the motions of the way that life just is, or am I actually embracing the opportunity, embracing the experience and doing everything that I can to create the life that I want? So it's a question to always ask yourself. And it's so important because there's so much that are, is put on us. There's so many demands on us that it forces us in a place where we have to go into autopilot because it's like, everything just is overwhelming. 
But if we stay in autopilot, we truly are missing out on opportunities to have excitement in our life, opportunities to create things, opportunities to meet new people, opportunities to create the life that we actually desire, not the one that's just going to be built for us. So think about your life. Are you living in autopilot or are you living in manual mode where you're creating your future? So those are the four lessons that I really wanted to share and that made me think just how real and how much this is real for life. And so again, the first one is those small changes make huge trajectory changes. The higher you go, the less resistance you have. So the higher your energies are, the less resistance you're going to have for creating the life that you want. The importance of using navigation, having a vision, knowing exactly what you want out of life. And then number four, not living in autopilot, being consciously aware of the decisions you're making, making life exciting, creating the life that you want and allowing it to be created by your desires, not allowing life to create it for you. So again, I hope this resonates with you. I hope you can just take one thing from this and start making, again, maybe those small changes to move your life in a different direction, or maybe start developing what your vision is for what you want. And if you found this to be beneficial, please share it with someone. Please allow someone else to have the gift of seeing life through a different lens, having a different perspective, and transforming themselves, their life, and their reality into something that they desire. And I hope it also does the same for you. Thank you again so much for spending your precious time with me. Thank you.